Have you ever gone to a bead show or wished you could go to a bead show? I had a lot of fun last weekend, October 21st, and spent a few hours at the Bead Affair bead show in Watertown, Massachusetts. In the video, I'll show you several of the tables that I really enjoyed shopping at, and I'll also show you all the goodies that I bought. So first of all, my apologies for it not occurring to me to actually turn my phone sideways when I recorded. Uh, oh well. This table is full of some of the most gorgeous lampwork beads. Here's some dichroic glass. These are big honking lampwork focals. She wanted me to show you her dragon here. And just some absolutely beautiful pieces. Right at the beginning, those were pen blanks that you can buy and then slide on whatever beads you want onto the pen. This is when you walk into the main part of the show. You can see it's just a big, huge space. This is the Armenian Center, actually, in Watertown, Mass. And you could see just trays and trays of beads and findings. It can be overwhelming. It's good to go with a plan and kind of have an idea of what it is you want to focus on getting because you could easily go crazy. And, uh, and end up not getting what you want and getting a lot of what you don't really need. It's fun when they have some of their beads made up into samples to show you how they can be used. Although my favorites really are the trays of beads. And one, the wonderful thing that you can do at a bead show that you can't do shopping online is run your fingers through them and just sift and sort through these piles of beads and stones and pendants. Those are fun, all Halloween themes, cute little charms. Like I said, it can be dizzying, so it's good to have an idea of just what it is that you want. This is a lamp worker. She's got some finished pieces along with some bead weaving, some gorgeous lamp work beads. Oh, the husband does the chain mail and the wife does the beads. I asked, uh, and they, they kind of collaborate on designs. So he made the chain mail and then asked her to make a bead that went with it in that big one that you saw. This guy designed, look at that, it lights up. He designed a solar-powered clasp that just sits on the windowsill during the day and then when you wear your necklace out at night, it lights up. Is that not the coolest thing ever? You can see that the beads are lit up from the inside. I wasn't able to purchase anything here. I seriously thought about it. This lady, Earthsea Glass, everything on her table, or just about everything, has a beach theme, or a sea, or ocean. Most everything. All right, there's some Christmas. There's a little fish dishes that you can dig through and get some 50 cent beads. So she's got finished pieces. There she is. And she's got beads that you can buy. Really nice display. I love her little pier and the sand that the things are sitting on. Lots of folks have some really creative ways of displaying their wares, so it, it just makes it fun to shop and look. And I especially enjoyed talking to the artists. This table is called Funky Stuff. They have loads of things, chips and beads. And look at the size of those beads and those necklaces. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Crazy. Lots of gemstones shell beads, just really nice, nice quality things. Like they had a strand of lapis lazuli, I don't know if it's in this video. Uh, it was $90. Remember, if you remember my video on uh, how light and the imitation, you know, that, that tells you that that strand was likely true lapis lazuli and not an imitation. And just tables full of these strands, and you just want to run your fingers through all of them. And you see those little white baskets? When you go up to a table and you're standing there looking for more than a couple of minutes, they hand you a basket, or it might be something different at a different table, but, or a tray. But the idea is that you fill it up. <laughs> Makes it convenient for shopping, and you have these little baskets that you see something you like, you put it in. 
Silver in Style, they have loads of beads and lots of findings in all different metals. Not just silver, you could see brass, there's copper. Oh yes, beach glass, sea glass, dichroic, chains that you can buy by the foot. I think last time I went I bought a lot of chain, but I didn't this time. All sorts of findings. There's some copper. Don't you just want to run your hands through them all and dig through them all? <laughs> Buy one of each. <laughs> it can be overwhelming. You know, I meant to get some of those big hole gemstone beads. I'm not sure why I didn't. I think I got distracted with the recording. Oh well, it's not like I didn't get enough. <laughs> So here are the goodies that I got at the bead show. First of all, I didn't just go to the bead show to buy things, but I also was taking opportunities to hand out my new business card, which I don't think I've shown you yet. I finally got new business cards with branding that matches my website and all of my site's branding, and I'm quite pleased with them. On the back, there's all of my social media information, and I think the front design came out pretty nice. It's nice and simple and clean. I paid a little bit extra to get spot gloss. It's just on the artwork. And I think this artwork is a pretty good representation of what I do. Sculpting, polymer clay, jewelry, and all kinds of crafts. This is one of my most popular projects actually, the resin one. So there's that. And I was able to hand out a handful of these, and hopefully people will check out the site. If you have got my card and came to this video from the Watertown Bead Show, let me know in the comments and say hello. It was so nice to meet everybody there. The very first thing I bought was a bunch of magazines. Bangkok beads. I was actually having a clearance. They were getting rid of stuff, closeout sales, and they had magazines for a dollar. And so I think I bought three of their $1 magazines. They're older, 2006. That's, gosh, 11 years old, 2006. But you know, you can always still get good ideas, and color ideas. These are gorgeous colors. Um, and so I just grabbed a few. Uh, I also wanted a bag. When I went to the show, I did not bring my purse. I had everything in my pockets. And the previous year, uh, when I went, my credit card was compromised, so I had all cash. So I had some of my cash in a back pocket, some in a front pocket, some in my bra. <laughs> so that if somebody robbed me, because these places are, fa let's face it, they are prime places for pickpockets. You're busy, you're distracted. So I figured if somebody pickpocketed me, they wouldn't get everything. But fortunately, that didn't happen. And then uh, the Bead Designer International, the folks who are sponsoring the show, actually had a table of, well, some really old, 1996 and 97, 20-year-old magazines. But isn't that beautiful? You know, I don't have a problem with older magazines. There's always good information in there. These techniques aren't really going to be outdated. So these are fun to flip through, get ideas. I just like to look at magazines. All right, now that we have a little space here, I can show you a bit more. Uh, let's see, oh, this was, as I was starting to say, a Splendid Loon Studio, and it was just absolutely gorgeous, the array of these iridescent looking beads. They just had them in a rainbow of colors. And they were priced very wisely. They were priced so if you bought 20 beads, it was up to 20 beads, it was 75 cents each. 21 to something was 70 cents each, and so on. And if you count, there are 21 beads here. <laughs> but I thought these were so pretty. I just pulled out, I think, three different shades that she had. And I really didn't even count, except I did make sure to get plenty of these so I could probably make a pair of earrings with a couple of these. And I just like the different sizes. I thought it would make a lovely necklace. And so after I picked out all of these, then I went over to her focals 
and got this. And now these are ceramic beads. Yep, that was 15. I'll have to read that later. But this is their little card and insert, which is kind of cool. Splendid Loon Studio. And they just have a nice... That's a beautiful thing about going to a bead show is that you can actually... You can touch these. You can run your hands through them. You can pick through the bins and get just the ones you want. So I'm really looking forward to making a necklace, bracelet, earrings, maybe all of the above, maybe just a couple out of these beads. The next table I purchased from was Ancient Moon Beads. You saw some of their selection in the video, and I just love these metal beads. I use these all the time, these kind of faceted cube brass beads, although I don't know what they are. They are not solid brass. They're actually lighter. And I know they I knew they weren't brass like the other ones I bought. They must be over something. Because I can just tell by the weight that they're not as heavy as a strand of brass beads. But these are just great filler. I got the brassy ones and the kind of coppery ones. They're great fillers and spacer beads. They just add some interest without taking over the show. And I've also had it in mind to do some projects where we use Ranger patinas and dioxides and other things to color metal pieces. So I picked up a few metal pieces. I thought these might make a really interesting necklace all attached together with the flowers and the leaves colored with patinas. And then this one looked like it would be a lot of fun to add different colors to in all sorts of mediums as I've shown I've shown you a lot of different things. Alcohol inks. And if you want to know, I'll I'll tell you. These were $2 each, this was $3 each, and these were $4 each. Which, yeah, it tells me they're definitely not brass. In fact, I didn't even look at the brass beads like that because they've gone so sky high since the first time I bought a strand of brass beads. Oh, and this guy, I saved his card because I may yet buy some of his stuff. I showed you this in the video, the angler fish with the solar clasp that makes your beads glow. It's just the coolest idea ever. It's one of the things I kind of regret not buying, but I really didn't have enough money to spend on it that day. This lady, Earthsea Glass, she is a lamp worker, and I showed you some things from her table, and everything is sea-themed. And so I've kind of picked through, I pulled out a bunch of flat beads because I thought these would be pretty to make a bracelet. I really like, oh I didn't even realize that one's pressed in a mold. It's got a little swirly. That's cool. I really like flat beads for a bracelet instead of a lumpy round. I just think they're so much more comfortable. And then this one, I call it her Finding Nemo bead. Doesn't it make you think of Finding Nemo? <laughs> I just really liked it. It's a little bit wonky which is why it was only $10. There's a lot of glass, this is heavy. But I'll do something with it. And that was a theme that was everywhere I went. The artists were telling me they had forgotten something. She had these little beads in separated by color in boxes and they were like 50 cents each. And she had these wonderful little shell dishes that her husband had bought for her just for people to sort things into. And they were on the kitchen counter. Another artist told me her brand new business cards were all on the kitchen counter. Things like that. It happens to all of us. Oh, these were from that table called Funky Stuff. The one with the great big huge necklaces. So I got some chips. I just thought this was the prettiest color. Those were $4. They were three for $10, but I honestly could not find two others that I really liked. And I have a fair amount of chips. These I thought were really pretty. These are carnelian. And these were, all of their beads were, I don't know if it's a gimmick, they were marked, they were half of the marked price. So they were marked 12 and the strand was $6. And tiger eye. I love tiger eye. I have tons of it in all different shapes and I don't use it often enough, but I always go for it when I see it. 
And I love this different shape. I just thought it was kind of interesting. These were $6 also. And then this is serpentine. Now I've made other things. I made a leafy green serpentine necklace with big round pale green serpentine beads. And I like these so much better. I'm definitely more into kind of the chartreuse green that these are. And then this is from EOS Designs. They have a shop in Marblehead, Mass, which is north of Boston, which is a bit of a hike for me. But it was nice. They included a coupon that you could use in the shop. And I got a bunch of things. And they ha also had clever pricing. Buy four of these, get one free. Buy five, get one free. So naturally, I had to buy however many it was. These I thought were really pretty. I got them in gold and silver. They're clasps. And you can hardly even tell it's a clasp. This is something you could... There it goes. You could put towards the front of the design or make it part of your vocal design. What I like about these is you can actually open them up and do things with them. So there's lots of possibilities for different things. You wouldn't want to keep doing that repeatedly because then you'll weaken your metal and break it bead caps, cord ends, all kinds of possibilities for those. those. These just have an interesting feel to them. And these are just nice antique gold color. And I got a bunch of charms. Oh, I know I had some honking ones. I don't know what I'm going to do with those. Be fun to put some kumihimo in there. I don't know, they're just interesting. And then I got these tweezers. Although, actually, I plan to use them more for polymer clay. I've been looking for a pair of tweezers that I can make come together parallel. So not like this, but more like this. And I can use them for actually shaping like doll fingers that you could press them this way. Because if you look at your fingers, your fingers are actually not round. They're oval. You know, it's wider that way than that way. So you can use something like a pair of tweezers for little tiny fingers, so I will probably adjust these and bend them, one of them or both of them, out just a tiny bit so that they come together more parallel. So that was from EOS Designs. And then I promised myself that I would get one luxury thing. If there was something I liked that was just kind of self-indulgent, that I would do that. And this was made by Shauna Bettencourt um, of the Polymer Garden. So she's a polymer clay artist. And she made this. Isn't that beautiful? It's a pendant, but it could be worn as a pin. You just slide a pin back through there. And see the beautiful finish on the back? That's the sign of a true artist, that she finished it well. It's got a nice texture, even the bale piece is nicely done. She's got a little signature piece back there. And it's just beautiful. Now, yeah, I could look at this and say, well, I could do that, and I could. But it isn't my style, really. It's just not what I do. And I think it's important, if I can, when I'm able to. Something got spilled on there. I'm not always able to, but if I'm able to, to support other artists. And I just love this. I love green and purple. And I'm looking forward to stringing this with maybe some silk ribbon. And I'm picturing maybe doing some danglies underneath it. We'll see. And yes, it was $38. And besides my gas and my Reuben that I bought myself for lunch, that is what I got at the bead show. So I hope you enjoyed the little bit of a video and tour of the bead show and what I got and be watching for a lot of these findings coming up in future videos. Happy creating!